Good afternoon, all of you. Uh, um, I want to thank, first of all, uh, all the organizers of this uh, of this event and EIT for uh, pos or, uh, did I say something wrong? Should I? Inno Energy, of course, yes. And <laughs> as uh, as they say, yeah, I'm from the first uh, year of Select. Uh, since I graduate, I've been uh, spending most of my time working on energy access, uh, in particular way in South Southern Africa. And what uh, I will talk about today is some of some of my experience and mainly like analyzing what are the trend for uh, uh, to enable like energy access for off-grid rural community in a developing country. So. The main uh, topic of the presentation will be the rise of pay go solar. It's a combination of, in the recent year, in the last, let's say, three to five years, a combination of existing technology, PV panel, uh, battery, uh, LED light, uh, with uh, innovative uh, uh, financing and business model made possible uh, uh, to, to market affordable uh, solar system, solar home system with uh, combining like also a financing element that enable like to meet uh, the cash flow need of, we wouldn't say the bottom of the pyramid, but definitely like a low income uh, and underserved community in terms of energy access and other service. So let's start looking a bit about uh, the problem. You might be familiar with this image or other one. The, the concept is that there is a, a, a large uh, section of the world, uh, mainly like what we call Global South, that have limited access to modern energy. We are talking about mainly access to the grid in the way in which it's defined, but so we know about this 1.5, 1.2 billion people, uh, 700 uh, million in uh, South Southern Africa, the rest uh, across India and Southeast Asia that don't have access to, to the grid. There is even like more people that have like unreliable access to the grid, so it means they're like grid connected, but they cannot, they have like frequent back blackout and other problem. Why this is a big problem? Of course, each one of us can have different idea. Let, let's name some of them. Uh, energy, it is one of the main driver for progress. Uh, we know that like from basic uh, access to light, it enable uh, community to extend their, uh, their active hours uh, over the night. So working, social interaction, uh, studying for longer, and then we have, you know, possibility to connect using mobile phones and also other issues related like to safety and also health issues related to current alternative use, for example, for lighting and energy like kerosene. Um, what, uh, why this problem is uh, so big or why this problem has not yet been solved? There's been a lot of work that has been done, of course, for decades trying to tackle this, uh, this issue. Uh, the, f the reason is that uh, if we look at like uh, who are the people that lack access to the grid, 85% of those live in rural area and what do they have in common? They, there is an, they live in like a sparsely populated uh, village area, so low density of population. They are characterized by low and uh, variable income, uh, instable, mainly from selling uh, agricultural products or from some informal job. And the third thing is that of course most of there is not uh, there are not industrial load or like a lot of commercial activity, mainly like domestic load uh, due to the previous issue low income. They want to have, you know, dishwasher or energy intense uh, um, device. So there will be also low power requirements. So traditional grid extension, that is what, you know, work in uh, the rest of the world, has a bit more problem because, I mean, it's problematic. You cannot meet this uh, um, this need because, of course, you need you need to build a network which is you know at, at a cost connected to it, and if there is low density of population, that's not uh, uh, that means like your cost would increase. The local population cannot cover the cost of connection because of their low income, and even if the build the grid is is uh, is built, it would be difficult for a for a utility company to really you know get back their investment because the demand initially and for a long time will be extremely low. So how this problem, and these are the reason why, the cause why you know, this problem is still so big and a large section of uh, people living really in developing countries that are not yet grid connected. Solution uh, that we saw in the recent year is the, what we call you know, solar home system. 
they are uh, distributed, so there is not the need to build a network. So that cost is uh, taken away. They are uh, uh, modular, and uh, more recently, you know, there is they can be sold over time with like uh, an initial small deposit uh, and uh, periodic uh, installments. So we can meet again the the cash flow or uh, the low income. They could be used as a substitute for the current solution like kerosene, meeting the same uh, uh, kind of price. And they are efficient, so it means that it's actually a good thing that the, the, the energy service required by like, this unserved population are not high in terms of energy demand. So let's look at this from another perspective. If I'm a utility company, I'm selling energy, I'm selling kilowatt hours. So my interest is uh, I want to sell as much as possible of those. Now, this is what my business model is based on. Of course, few, it's a bit more complex, but uh, um, if I uh, sell an energy service, the important thing is that how much, for example, light do you have available, how many lumens, and not how many kilowatt hours are associated uh, with, those, uh, with those lumens. And so the fact that you know, technology are improving and efficiency is also increasing, it means that I can meet uh, higher energy demand with lower energy uh, needs, so the system can be cheaper, uh, smaller, and, uh, and uh, essentially more affordable. So the combination of, um, uh, this is like a you know, schematic of a solar home system, uh, basic uh, uh, what we call Pico solar uh, um, solar home system. There is a PV panel. Uh, you know, I think we are familiar with that. I don't know if I have to explain the, <laughs> <laughs> the way it works. Uh, a, uh, a charge regulator with a battery connected to like, you know, LED lights with switch and possibility to power phone or small appliances like television sometimes even like a fridge and fan. The, there are two elements that, um, the combination of two elements that brought this, this technology as a more and more available and uh, became like an actual like a, a solution for, uh, for energy, <laughs> energy access and they're like technological improvement. What we, I said at the beginning about like existing solution they got better over time, and they can be combined to, to you know, to to be uh, in a like a reliable and affordable solar system, and the diffusion of mobile money and the adoption of mo mobile phone, and this is mainly like related to more uh, the business model, like uh, through which we, this system is sold. In terms of uh, so, let's start looking at the tec uh, technical aspect. Uh, there is, uh, as we say, PV panel pretty self-explanatory graph uh, getting much cheaper uh, very quickly. Even in the last few years, we saw like, uh, this is like around 2008, when we saw that the price uh, uh, became almost half. Uh, why? Technological improvement, of course, increase of, uh, of uh, production. And, um, and right now, we are even for small applications, so we are talking about less than 50 watt uh, PV panel, like we're also under the $1 per watt which is something that happened like uh, years ago for larger, for larger like uh, $300, uh, 300 watt uh, uh, solar system, solar, solar PV panel, sorry. The other component is, uh, uh, I'm talking about LED light because uh, light is the most basic uh, energy service uh, demanded uh, by unserved population. The second one is uh, access to mobile phone and uh, it's the same thing, the concept is like efficiency if we want. Uh, electronic has become uh, uh, more and more efficient, so despite you know, the issue that you might have with your smartphone with always like uh, not charged, they require less and less energy to have the same, to make the same amount of phone calls or to access like the same amount of service. Same thing for LED light. Uh, we compare like in terms of like output in lumens, so how much light are you actually getting from your light? If you use an incandescent light bulb you will need 40 watt for 450 lumens uh, with a fluorescent 11, with a LED 4 and uh, today even less. So that means you need a smaller PV panel, you, you need a smaller battery, you need a smaller and cheaper system to deliver the same amount uh, of light. Same thing for uh, you know, DC uh, phone charging and so on. You don't need an inverter, for example. 
the last component, and uh, in a certain way, one of the most critical from a technical perspective are batteries, like for large off-grid application, and uh, now also like on-grid uh, application batteries, the most expensive component of the system, and the most uh, uh, also the one that traditionally have like a longer, shorter uh, lifetime. The, we started uh, working on uh, off-grid application and we were using like lead acid. Problem with the lead acid is, lead acid is that, well, it's cheap. Uh, used to be, it's cheap and it's, I mean, it used to be cheap and it's still cheap. The problem is that, of course, it is, uh, you cannot do deep discharge, so you need to oversize the battery often, like, you know, double it because you, you want to keep it like not under 50% rate of discharge. It is toxic that we are talking about, you know, spreading a lot of this butter in rural area in, uh, in Africa, in Asia, like you don't have a good system for, uh, you know, for, to recycle, to take the back and do reverse logistic in rural areas, like simply a nightmare. And, uh, and the third problem is that, of course, you know, the lifetime of a, of a, of a lead acid battery is relatively short. What happened in the last few years, I mean, mainly like you see an increase of, like in terms of uh, production. Uh, initially due to like portable electronics or mobile phones, more recently also electric cars. So th we start producing a lot more uh, lithium battery, means it became much cheaper to make them. The technology improved dramatically, the cost we see went down and now we use battery in from around 2012 uh, in a small uh, pico solar, like so, uh, solar lamps and now also solar home system. We use more, more like uh, lithium uh, batteries. Specifically, now we use lithium ferrophosphate, which is an improvement of the technology that we use for our mobile phone. It allow like uh, up to five years lifetime, so more cycles. This means that we can now sell Sorum system that have like a two years and recently three years warranty, which is incredible if you think you know these systems are used in extremely harsh condition. And, uh, and it's extremely important if you consider like how expensive it is to do maintenance and after sales service in, uh, in the area of the world we are talking about. This, um, these batteries are not toxic, are, uh, are stable, unless you, know, you buy the wrong Samsung phone. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and in general, uh, the, their decrease in, in, uh, in price combined with also the, recre the decrease in efficiency of uh, of the lead and the other component we were saying before make the solar system much cheaper. Um, all together, uh, combining all these things together, what we saw is that this is a projection for the IFC that has a big program called Light in Africa, Light in Global, that makes studies and uh, work also on, uh, on policy to uh, enable uh, increase of energy access, modern energy access. From 2012, if we, the system that we will have in 2020 will be five times brighter. Uh, we'll have a battery life which will be double than what we saw today, so we should get close to 10 years, and the cost will be a third. So that's I mean, all together new to know, it means we'll get better system and cheaper. Overall, the trend that we saw in the previous slide are continuing. The last component uh, of that, so at the moment we have like a good, uh, reliable solar home system. Unfortunately, like uh, still, uh, too expensive for most of uh, the rural, uh, off-grid rural customers. Why? Because it will still require like something that is maybe like 100, 150 dollar uh, down payment, I mean uh, cash payment for a system like that. It is simply uh, uneconomical for a family living like between two to five dollar per day. And it's also like a big risk that you know comp families tend to be like reluctant to, to take. So you have to consider, like, we want to solve this problem, we want to solve it quickly, you want to speed up the adoption rate. How do you do that? Well, you, re you, re you reduce, reduce the risk for the customer, and you make the, prob the product more affordable, matching the cash flow of your customer. So they used to buy, they used to buy rice, they used to buy uh, any product, like uh, even like salt and oil, like in small amount, you know, it's famous, uh, what Unilever and other company achieve selling soap in extremely small quantity. That's the same thing, the same way they buy kerosene, the same way they buy coal, the same way they can now buy um, solar or like energy access in small increment. How this is possible? Well, 
first thing that we saw is like, so this graph show uh, the access to electricity. Oh, wow. Okay. Now uh, we can hear me better. Um, so the first, uh, uh, the first show the access to electricity, so critical all pretty much all over the country between North Africa and South Africa. And, um, yeah. and the second one showed that uh, subscriber of a, a mobile phone, this is a slide from I think 2013, so today things are even better. In general, there's been like a big adoption of mobile phones. Uh, why this, this happened, similar reason, we could see like why it was a big problem like building a, an electric grid, similar uh, problem is like building a telephone network uh, across Africa, mobile phone enable like reduce the uh, the burden of building the network, uh, increase, uh, give a good access to mobile service, this creates uh, you know, a rise on that combined with a reduce in terms of price. What's the good news is that you can then uh, communicate across the different players in the value chain from your customer, your agents, in a pretty like unexpensive way. Uh, in the same way, like even like cost of like tariff of calling uh, across Africa drastically decreases, uh, in particular way in, in, in the same country. This was combined with the, the rise of a of a new uh, system. Uh, it's a mobile money or a cashless payment, which is very important. So once you have a, a over 70% penetration of mobile phones in rural area and you can bring service like banking service or money transfer using this device. What's the advantage of that is that, well, first of all, it's, uh, it's much cheaper, like transferring money in a digital way. You can rely on the existing network of people selling uh, uh, credit for telephone. It's much safer and, um, and it can be used. It can be leveraged by other business to build uh, you know, very good service. For example, this is what is happening with the uh, pay as you go solar system is that you use uh, uh, what your problem is that you need to have like you know a very good system that can last for at least few years because you will sell, you will sell the system over time so you need to make sure that is you know reliable it won't break and you take the risk of uh, financing it so you really need to make sure that the system work is good for the customer because the customer doesn't have to take the risk so the the adoption rate uh, there is a surge because they know that like, if the system stops working, I guess I'm paying. On the other end, uh, the problem becomes like, okay, I'm gonna get the money from this customer. Initially, pay you go was based on collecting cash payment, and very, very expensive because you know, of like, lack of infrastructure, you drive like three hours off road, and uh, all the risk associated with that. The second step was using scratch card, like mobile phone, Mobile phone, uh, mobile network operator enjoy extremely high margin. So the, what they to sell a scratch card, you need to have, you know, you need to give basically give a share of margin to from the final agent to the big agent. And so it can be quite expensive. Like if you're trying to sell an energy service that costs you five dollars, you might end up selling for like ten or fifteen dollar if you use scratch card. If you um, if you rely on mobile money, you can pay a fee which is between. Uh, two to five percent uh, to the mobile network operator, and you receive automatically your money in your bank account, essentially. You can integrate this with an API integration, and I mean, I'm getting a bit too technical, but <laughs> let's, say, let's say it's a pretty good solution uh, for, uh, it's, the, it's the missing, uh, it was the missing uh, component uh, to enable like uh, financing and you know, collection of this payment. Uh, and what we define as a pay you go enabling people to, pay, to buy when they need it. You have credit on your phone, you have like a sort of bank account on your phone. You need to, you want to buy like an energy credit of a day. If you don't buy it, your, your system won't turn on. So it's sort of like, you know, um, mobile phones uh, when you don't have a contract, which is quite common also in Africa. So again, it becomes easier for, uh, for customers to understand uh, what you are selling because you can mimic a product that they already know. And they, um, so the, if the system doesn't have credit, it will uh, shut off, it will be locked. You cannot uh, turn on your light. You can take your phone, send a mobile payment, uh, automatically you receive an SMS on your phone to put a code on your unit or directly in your unit if the unit is GSM enabled and the light will turn off. And over time, like there are different models, but the most common model is rent to one. So once you will complete all your payment, your system will be unlocked forever. 
until I mean the end of life of the system, and uh, and you become the owner of the system. Final slide. Uh, this is a sentence from the previous uh, director of the in, uh, International Energy Agency on the Africa Energy Outlook uh, 2014. And I think, I mean, it's something we want to share. It's an op that actually we can share today because there, there's been like over 100 companies selling this type of product that started from uh, 2008. We have like uh, an increase of like over 100% a year in both. Uh, small solar and uh, pace you go specifically over 700,000 solar home system pace you go solar home system be sold out today and more and more you know the largest company are now moving f to like a large debt deals that will enable to have financing uh, similar to the one that we saw for large installer like solar city in us so we can have the hope that yeah the challenge is unmontable referring to energy access and the benefit of success are immense so I hope uh, this will motivate maybe some of you that are like uh, don't know exactly what they can do and if they don't want to work in fracking, uh, there is a big challenge here like that need smart people to work on. Thank you. Just a very quick question. I hear that you're working in uh, one of the hottest companies in uh, this industry. Can you just tell us a bit about the company and uh, what you do there? Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm actually, so one year ago, uh, we, we started a company in Senegal called uh, Ulu Solar. It's a company doing, uh, so pace you go solar company are uh, mainly originally from East Africa. For two reasons, regulatory uh, about energy and uh, better uh, condition in terms of taxation. West Africa is, uh, was lacking uh, a similar actor and uh, it was still have the same problem instead of like, you know, lack of energy access. So I joined the two co-founder of this uh, of a company called uh, Ulu Solar. We now have been operating for one year. We have around like uh, 7,500 solar system in the field. We're now doing like national expansion and international ones. So the company sells space you go solar home system. So basic uh, system light and phone charging. By the end of the year, we will also have a solution for two power television and fan. And uh, yeah, we are expanding. So if uh, someone is more interested, uh, I'll share my email and uh, I'm happy to receive some, uh, some CVs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Vincenzo, what do you think is the unique selling proposition you have versus other pay-as-you-go companies such as B-Box, for example? Well, um, it is, uh, as we say, like it's still a huge problem. So we need, uh, it's a huge and complex problem. We need multiple player to act all together uh, as, and so B-Box, uh, D-Light, uh, another company like Encopa, which is the largest at the moment operating in Kenya, they are, uh, we are all doing in a certain way like similar things. There are small difference, you know, the, the success of a company uh, can always be simplified by one factor, but like all the combination of the things together, you know, you take Virgin that tried when I was a kid to do the same thing that Coca-Cola was doing, and they were like, yeah, essentially we're gonna make like, you know, a nice uh, and good tasting like a sparkling uh, beverage and people will buy from us. And it didn't work because I mean, there is all an environment that you have to build about that. Your business model is uh, the way you interact with your customer, the way you price your product, uh, the way you minimize risk, which is very important if you're doing financing. The way you secure funding, if it's equity, if it's debt. For us, uh, I mean, we are uh, moving faster than other company. In the way we are doing, we are taking like a bit more risk. We are, uh, we put together people with experience in this area, like trying, you know, not to replicate the same mistake that can be done by pioneer of the company in this region. But we're also trying to move faster as in the previous presentation, you know, not like really uh, implementing uh, our plan rather than uh, replanning them uh, and iterating them on paper. And we are from a, a very good uh, incubator in San Francisco YC from where like very large uh, uh, software company, uh, you know, traditionally are pushed by the investor just to grow, to grow, are coming from. So in that sense, like um, this is what we are doing different from other. I mean, we are trying uh, to grow faster and uh, we are making sure not to replicate the mistakes that other companies are doing. But no, we need, uh, you know, we need company like B-Box, we need more of this company uh, operating and we need also larger player like to come and show their interest. There's been a lot of like co-investing 
in uh, you know large company like NG Energy uh, invest in Bbox, they invest in uh, in Copa. I mean, and this is like it's not just bringing money, but it's bringing experience, it's bringing know-how, and it's bringing maturity to a to a, to an industry that is now ready for that. Uh, incentivize people to adopt uh, the mobile phones in case they don't have it. Interesting. So our uh, uh, we use a cashless uh, uh, payment system that doesn't really require a mobile phone because in uh, West Africa mobile money is less. Uh, uh, there is a lower adoption of mobile money versus, but there is still like a, what we call over-the-counter uh, cashless payment. To give you an easy example, like. Uh, Mobile money enable you to have a new wallet, so you have like a sort of like a account on your phone. You need to know how to operate this using like a basic SMS most of the time. So you need yeah the customer number one to have a mobile phone, number two to sign up for uh, for uh, for the service to know how to use it, and on top of this to have credit to transfer. The system that we use in Senegal is uh, is Wari, is an uh, over-the-counter transaction, so they have a network of agents. You can go to the agent and say that you want to make a payment, for example, to Ulu Solar account. You put your uh, your customer number, which is you know written on your on your unit, and you can make a transfer directly to us. The advantage is that uh, first of all, it already exists; it's already established. They are like the the biggest uh, company doing that, like they have like over 60% penetration. And the second point is that you don't need to train your customer. The customer doesn't need to have a mobile phone and you don't even have to train them on how to make the operation because it's done by an, an existing agent. Um, hey, one question. Do you have a strategy of how to further support the families to move up the energy ladder? So once they have the basic need covered, how can they further expand the system to be able actually to, yeah, I don't know, power machine or other um, equipment? Hey, yes. <laughs> now, so it is, uh, um, we do have a plan that means we are increasing our portfolio of product, offering product that are like uh, not just light and phone charging, but you know, other appliances. Uh, it is something that happened uh, spontaneously over time. And this is also why in countries like, for example, Tanzania, you will see that the local utility and the government are supporting a, a big local player called Off Grid Electric and giving money to them to, instead of increasing, a, instead of going for grid extension, supporting, like subsidizing the operation of this player to like bring a solar home system to the different family because they know that once you need, you know, to move from kerosene to like. A, light and phone charging from solar, and then you would like want to have maybe a television, a fan, next step charging a laptop, and this thing will happen over time. I mean, it is important uh, because we are, uh, Pesuco company are, you know, born out of the failure of other company trying to achieve this result, and in particular way also microfinance. We bet over the fact that it was possible uh, to give a loan to someone without credit history and without, you know, grouping them uh, on a specific service because we were able to offset an existing expenditure. So that means that a customer that is spent 10 euro per, uh, per month in uh, phone charging and, uh, and kerosene can afford a specific system because it will spend the same or a bit less. It becomes difficult to speed up too much the process over what is spontaneously possible, you know, essentially. Depends how much money the customer is making. It depends if it increases productivity, if the revenue increases. So you don't want to push too much uh, the process. You want to make this available, but you don't want to, you know, facilitate it too much because it means you will over indebit uh, the customer. I mean, these guys are a priority. Like uh, we are talking about, like low-income uh, rural families, so they have the favorable income, but also they spend like a large portion of their money on uh, on food and uh, and basic things. And you don't want to take too much of uh, of their of their income on uh, on like aspirational, but like you know not always essential uh, devices. Well, no, okay. No, no, yeah, I mean, over time, uh, uh, most of the developing country in the world are like growing at an incredible rate. And uh, so over time, I mean, their life, their life is, uh, is improving with or without pace you go. Uh, we'll, with pace you go solar, I mean, we hope it will increase more because as I said at the beginning, you know, energy, and modern energy access is a driver to pro, uh, for progress. So it means if your kids can study longer hours, can maybe access a better job. 
if you don't have to uh, work, if you can work longer hour, you can maybe like, you know, increase your revenue. And uh, if you don't uh, have to rely on kerosene and you can save some of this money, you can use this money for something else. Uh, so it is, uh, so this is like from a customer perspective. From the company perspective, I mean, our limit uh, at this moment and for the industry as a whole is not really that a customer cannot, we cannot extract more money from, an ex from a customer, but it's really like, you know, trying to reach all the customer. Take a country like Kenya, which is the first one where mobile money started, where like a good regulation on tax and on energy started. So in Copa, which is the largest uh, company doing pay to go solar is from there. They have over 300,000 uh, solar home system already installed. And they are like still at 4% of the market penetration for off-grid. So there is like, uh, I mean, that's why was, I was talking about, you know, other players, like are they competitors or are we working together like on this? I mean, we are still at the, at the stage in the market in which, you know, there are a lot of people that still can get that. It's kind of like Solar City trying to build you like a, a larger PV system on your roof. I mean, their problem is probably, is more to get your neighbor to get a PV system on the roof. Okay, so far it's the same. Uh, so basically, it's a sort of a leasing model. So what you do is that, is that you do the upfront investment, you put the units there, and then you lock them by the software, and then once they charge the money, it starts lighting up again. But what if they cannot pay for long periods? Is there liability like you can take off the system again and just rip it off from them, or you will wait for a certain period till they can pay again, and then this will make it a longer investment to pay back for you as a company? So how do you mitigate that? How do you mitigate this? What do you do? So yeah, there are different models in terms of pay to go. The most common two are like the utility-based model in which you, you pay every month for a, a, a fixed amount. And if you don't pay like for, if, you, if your payment is due today and you don't pay, like you will have no access to light and phone charging or other energy service until you make the payment. And the utility model you pay perpetually. So they are responsible for after sales service, they are responsible for upgrade and replace the battery, but you will never become an owner. Now, the other model is uh, yeah, a sort of leasing model, and there are like different uh, way to structure the leasing model. The market is converging, is converging towards that model. And uh, how do you do risk minimization? Of course, I mean, uh, there are aspects that you do preventive. So in the way like you select your customer, things that you can do easily like uh, playing with your initial uh, deposit. Like, you know, you want to select a customer that really has, that is really motivated, so you can ask a bit more. You want to ask certain uh, specific questions to have some parameters and define uh, in a certain way what can be the credit history of this person. And uh, there are things that you can do like uh, after. For example, if a customer doesn't pay, he will be contacted by, he will receive an SMS. It will be contacted by a call center. It will receive a visit of an agent. You will repossess the product over time if the customer is not paying for you know of multiple weeks. In general, what happens is that customer means miss payment because they have like a variable income. So that's the good thing of pay as you go. They can pay more when they have more money. So maybe you know when they do harvesting, they can put enough credit for the next three to six months. If they miss one day or two, it's not a big deal. It's like really when you make a phone call with your uh, with your, uh, uh, with your telephone. If what happens is that every time they miss a day, their, uh, their payoff time uh, extend because they have to pay a certain amount, the principal plus, you know, eventually the interest calculated in different way. And so if they miss a certain amount of payment, instead of paying off the system in 12 months, maybe it will take 15, 13 and so on. But yeah, eventually if a customer is not paying for a, a very long amount of time, you might repossess the system or you might simply consider that asset lost. I think a lot of us in the audience would like to work with developing countries. And um, I'm curious of your story. How did you end up in it and how do you feel about it? And what's your biggest challenge for us to share? You might end up looking like a zombie even if you have a good job some days <laughs> because it's really like a working, uh, even having a good job if you're really passionate and if in particular way if you work in a startup often it's like very long hours and uh, you could have problems that uh, can be like sometime intense uh, when you, you know, when you are scaling up and when you, when you're building a company from scratch. Uh, working in developing countries of course challenging 
it is uh, satisfying, it is rewarding. Uh, there are like things that are more difficult, things that could be easier. For example, uh, maybe there is like, uh, it's, it's, more, it's more dynamic in a certain way. Uh, you can see directly like in the eye sometimes the, the beneficiary of the work that you are doing. How it happened for me is that uh, I travel uh, for the first time to, in that case was to East Africa, between the first and the second year of my master. <laughs> and then we end up doing like a, a big uh, work in there, a bit, uh, doing a big tour uh, of the region. Uh, we actually like uh, collaborate for a, a, I would say very short amount of time. We like one of the first, one of the pioneer of solar in Tanzania. And, uh, and so we saw like this thing happening. We know like there was a problem about energy. We saw like uh, M, uh, M Copa, at the M-Pesa, sorry, so the mobile money starting and we're like, I mean, this is great. We, we don't even have that, you know, in, uh, in Europe. We need to use our credit card and like here you can do everything with your phone. So we come back, uh, we got into, there was a business case competition called Alt. Uh, at the time it's still going now, like every year uh, from all the school of the world, business uh, or not, you can apply. And at that year they were trying to s solve three big problems. Energy was one of those. And there was a case study on, uh, on a company, on a social enterprise doing energy access in Africa. So we apply, we, we work on, a, on our proposal. The proposal was uh, not, that, uh, not exactly this, but it was about financing for portable light at the time. So, I mean, uh, it, was really, it was really intense also because we were both working, having an internship, writing our thesis. And, I mean, but also very, very exciting, like, you know, having Skype call in the middle of the night, uh, meeting where we could, and, uh, and so this is how, like, if you want, uh, I, we start, uh, like, and I start in particular being passionate about that when the, we got to the final of this, uh, of this competition, and, um, and then, I mean, uh, eventually I got, uh, I got a job even with a company that we were trying to, that was the case study was about, and now, like, I moved to, to Nairobi, I work across East Africa for three years, and then I moved to West Africa. Yeah, this is the story in short. Thank you. <laughs>